So we've got the original Raspberry Pi, we've got the B Plus, and we've got the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. Now I wanted to put them out here so you can see the size difference and also so you can see where the components are placed. Now you'll see a very marked difference from the original Raspberry Pi to the B Plus, but not so much when you get to the Raspberry Pi 2. There are, however, a few differences. So you'll notice that you've maintained the extra USB ports we get in the B Plus. We've maintained those on the Raspberry Pi 2. We've got the same 40 pin GPIO and we've got a full size HDMI. We've also got the 3.5 millimeter four pole jack that gives you your video out and it also gives you audio out as well. We've got the serial interface display as well as the camera connector on there as well. And we've got micro USB for power. Now on the back of the board, we've got our micro SD in the same place as we had it on the B plus, but we've also got a chip on the bottom of the board there. So that means that that area needs to be free from uh, parts of your case. So you might find that some of the more snugly fitting cases won't fit properly. However, if you have a case that doesn't fit so snugly, you're probably going to be okay. The areas that were raised before on the B plus are roughly the same areas on the Pi 2 that were raised. So what is the real difference here? Well, the, the Pi 2 comes with a quad-core processor, 900 megahertz quad-core processor, in comparison to the 700 megahertz single-core processor that's on the B Plus and on the original Pi. We've got a gig of RAM in the Pi 2, uh, as opposed to the 512 meg of RAM that's in the original B Plus. Now, what does that mean in terms of performance? Well, it has been stated that the Pi 2 is six times faster than the B Plus. I haven't measured it exactly like that, but I have done a quick measurement of loading speeds in browsers, so we'll have a look at that in a second. But the extra RAM coupled with the quad-core processing means that your operating system is going to run a lot faster. It also means that it's able to store more information in flash memory and recall it quickly. So it means if you're doing any kind of multitasking, the Pi 2 is going to be faster than the, the B+, and certainly faster than the original Raspberry Pi. So what does that mean in terms of performance? Well, you've got the flash memory and you've also got a 900 megahertz processor, but is that gonna do much for your, your Python code that you're running? Well, you've got an extra 200 megahertz, so yes, it will be faster, but it's, your Python code is not really gonna take advantage of the quad core that's on there, unless you use something like multi-processing or uh, some kind of software tricks in order to run multiple instances of your application. I'll put something in the description for you to have a look at about how to make your, your Python code run on multi-core uh, systems. So uh, I'll put that in the description so you can have a look. It does mean that your operating system is going to run more efficiently in the background when your Python code is running though. So it certainly will help. When running things like Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi 2, you're going to find that it runs a lot better, especially if you're playing with friends or something like that. You've got more memory available and you've got these multi-cores to help your operating system run. Let's have a quick tour of the board. So we've got four USB ports. We've got our Ethernet port. We've got our 3.5 millimeter jack, which is capable of uh, audio and video out. We've got our HDMI, full HDMI just there. Uh, we've got our micro USB just here, and we've got our micro SD card slot on the back. We have the same 40 pin GPIO running along the board here, so that'd be useful for anyone that wants to use the Pi for input and output stuff. And the Pi is capable of kicking out something like 1.2 or 1.5 amps across the USB devices. So if you've got something that's quite hungry for power, then it's going to be able to power that for you. So I said before I had a little look at the, the browsers on the B Plus and on the Pi 2 to see how well they performed. Now, all I did was load up a web page on the Pi 2 and on the B Plus. I didn't go much further than that in testing, but the B Plus was a lot slower than the Pi 2. In fact, the, the Pi 2 was able to render that page much, much more quickly. And that's because of the, the extra RAM that the, the Pi 2's got, but also because of the processor. Right, so this is the B Plus. We've booted into uh, Raspbian, and I'm going to do a quick test of how fast this is, and then we'll look at it in comparison to the Raspberry Pi 2. So. All I'm going to do is load up a web page. It's pretty processor intensive on, uh, on the B+, and you'll see that when I load up the browser. So I'm just going to use the standard Epiphany web browser. Did I click that? Yeah, there we go. 
So you'll see, I don't know if you can see that, but the, the CPU usage jumps up to 100%. That's not necessarily bad, but it does show us how quickly it loads up. So I've got it connected via Ethernet, so it should be the fast, it, fast as it can be. So really what we're doing is testing how quickly it will render the page. So that has a lot to do with the browser, but it also has a lot to do with the CPU. So the internet connection is more than fast enough to load this page in seconds, but uh, this browser is taking a little while to load it all up. And there we go, it's done. Uh, the process is still showing 100% usage, so something else is going on here. And now we've got down to zero, so it's finished loading in all of the elements it needs. Let's see how long it takes to load this page. Well, that's already immediately a lot quicker. But it's still bringing in some of the detail. There we go, it is a lot, lot faster. And certainly, moving around the page is a lot quicker. Now again, if you had a, a class 10 micro SD card, then it would be uh, a more swift system. But as it is, this is a, a class four, so it's doing pretty well. So actually I think the, the performance is notably better, even just on simple things like web browsing. So the Pi 2 is much, much faster um, for performing operating system based tasks. Now, what's really great about the Pi 2 is that it's coming in at a very low price point. Um, at, for a board that's, uh, that's got a quad core processor and got one gig of RAM, uh, in comparison to the B+, Plus, it's brilliant. However, if you've just bought the B+, Plus, don't worry too much. The benefits that you'll get from having the Raspberry Pi 2 are, while brilliant, they're not um, the be-all and end-all of processing power, really. Um, your Python code's gonna run just as well in the B+, Plus as it will on the Pi 2. You will have a bit of an issue with, uh, with software if you're gonna be moving over to the Pi 2. It will only run Noobs 1.4, so, it won't run the 1.3 that works on the B+. And you'll find that most things that you're going to be doing, you'll be able to do on the B+. So the, the Pi 2 is great, um, but if you've just bought the Pi uh, B+, then don't worry too much. Overall, this is a great board. Um, I think it, uh, it, it's a great successor to the B+. Um, I've really enjoyed using it, um, so I advise you to pick one up. Now, I just want to say I got this board from Element 14. They sent it to me to review, so thank you very much to them. If you'd like to have a look at their website, you can find it somewhere over here or in the description. Um, so thank you very much for watching.